Hey there, this is Andrew. Welcome to our final video of our chess series. And in this video, we're going to be going over the knight as well as some of the little pieces that make up our scene. And we've almost completed all of the programming for the project. All we have to do now is hop into Visual Studio so we can look at our knight script. And within the knight script, we've added this new function that we're calling create cell path. And if you remember, we also had a function within our base piece that was create cell path. These two functions completely operate independently and kind of do the same thing, but in very different ways. So I didn't intend upon overriding the virtual one that would be in the base class. So I named them the same thing. So I kind of had an understanding of what its job was while still keeping the functionality separate. And like before, we're going to be storing our current board position in our current X and our current Y value. Then we're going to be making a series of calls to a function that we're going to be making in just a little bit called matches state and matches state is very similar to the function that we wrote for the pawn. And after looking at a little bit, I probably could have reused the same function and just placed it in the base class. So in the future, I know that is a thing that I could probably improve on, which is always something you should strive for when you are developing or programming or pretty much creating anything. But going back to movement, the knight moves in an L shape and it moves two to wherever the left or the right or up or down, and then moves one in a perpendicular direction. So let's say we're moving up and to the left. We're going to be able to move the knight forward two spaces and then one to the left. And at the most, the knight can move eight different spaces. And if you've noticed in this function, we have four different statements that we're going to be going to the left, the upper left, the upper right, and the right potential locations that the knight can move. But what I've done here, instead of having to write eight different statements, I've included this integer that I've called flipper, where we can put in either a positive or a negative value. So we can draw what is going to be the top four places that the knight can move or the bottom four. And if we look a little bit closer at the first statement that we have just for left, if we get the current X and we minus two, we'll be moving to the left two spaces. And then if we get the Y, we're going to be adding one to it. But if depending upon how the flipper movement is, we may move up one or we may move down one. And that same line of logic essentially applies to all of these calls to this function matches state. So we also have a new function that's check pathing right below this one, where we're going to be overriding the check pathing function in our base class, which how I talked before, the create cell path makes four cells. So we're going to be making two calls to it, where we're going to be passing in a one and a negative one. So we can check for all eight places that the, the knight can move to. And this is a pretty simple function. So now we're just going to move right on down to matches state and very similar to how we have before, except we don't have a target cell state like we did in the pawn class, but we do have a variable that we're calling cell state and we are getting the current cell state of our target cell that we're going to go towards. And then we, once we get that cell back, we're checking to see if there is not a friendly within the cell or if the cell is even within the bounds of our board. But if it is, we're going to be adding it to our highlighted cells list. And there we have it. We've completed all of the programming that we're going to be needing for this project. Now we're going to dress up the scene a little bit. So let's go back into Unity so I can show you a few of the things that I've done to add a little bit of extra detail to our project. But right before we do that, let's take a quick look at our knights where they should be able to jump over both friendly and enemy pieces, as well as have up to eight potential places that they can move. So taking a wider view here within the scene, you can tell that I already have a few meshes as well as a ground plane. Now I have this big ground plane for when we enable ambient occlusion on our post processing that will have some minor shadows at the bottom of our meshes. So now let's take a little bit of a closer look at the assets themselves. And the towers are from a modular set from the website Kenny NL. But here, all I've done is to some extent loosely placed these assets on my ground plane. But what I did do is I did vertex snap some of the pieces by holding V and being able to line them up exactly. But once we've placed our assets and they are, and they're where we want them, we're going to be using Unity's post processing stack, which you can get off of the asset store. And it's pretty simple to use. All you need is the behavior script attached to whatever camera you're using. And you just need to create a post processing data file so you can use it within the behavior script. And particularly for my post processing stack, I'm going to be using the fog first off, which I don't know why I click that. I just, it's usually on. So I think I just left it. The ambient occlusion, which is going to give us a little bit of small shadows within each of our meshes, as well as a very, very subtle shadow for our ground plane. And you can spend a lot of time playing with these settings, whether it's the intensity or the radius, there's a lot of stuff that you can do to sort of give your game a little bit of an edge. 
and then I tried playing with depth of field a little bit, I realized it was probably a bit much, so decided to leave it out. But then at the very bottom, I've also enabled the vignette, which is going to give us a very subtle gradient around the edges of our screen. And that's all it for the post-processing. Now we're going to take a quick look at some flags. And these flags came with the modular set. I've placed a flag on top of each of the towers, and I've attached an animator to both of them. And I'm not really going to be explaining the animator, so this is completely optional. But taking a closer look within the animation tab, I've just placed a few keyframes so we can rotate the flag to the left and to the right so we can simulate a bit of a windy wavy motion. But here I added a bit of more of a rotation so you can see what it looked like within the scene. But I almost forgot we also have a custom cursor. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Uh, and we have a public variable for a texture 2D that we're going to just call cursor texture. And then within the start function, we're going to be accessing the cursor class and we're going to be making a call to set cursor where we're going to be passing in our cursor texture, a vector 2.0, which is going to be the starting position for our cursor and a cursor mode, which we're going to be setting to auto. But that's it. We're done. Within seven videos, we've managed to create a very basic version of chess in Unity using Canvas. I would just like to say that thank you for joining me if you got this far, and if you would like to see any other series or potential projects, you can feel free to leave a comment. Or just leave a like if you liked the entire series, or maybe even just a part of it. And I have a few more series that are in the works, so hopefully I'll see you next time.